Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 209 of Category 5 Technology TV for Tuesday, September the 20th, 2011. So good to see you. Nice to have you here. Wow, September 20th already. I know. It feels like on? last time I was here is August, so I mean, time is flying. I don't know if it's actually August, but August? it feels like it. Could have been August. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, lots to cover tonight. Lots of viewer questions have come in, and it has just been a mad dash getting everything ready. I know. You should see him. He hasn't even had a chance to wipe the sweat from his brow. <gasps> <laughs> There, how's that? That was much better. Rachel, can you say hi and just make sure that the viewers are able to hear you? Just say hello. Hello. Can you guys hear her? Let us know in the chat room, category5.tv. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good to see everybody. Lots of people joining us in the chat room as well. Do you guys hear her Okay. What do we have coming up tonight? Well, big news is that uh, YouTube is now providing the ability to edit your video directly on YouTube. Oh, way cool. That's kind of interesting. We're going to be taking a look at that in, uh, in a few minutes' time. Cool, cool. Everybody chatting away in the chat mm-hmm. room about uh, this and that, little technical glitches. Of course. Hope things uh, work out okay. Justin.tv seems to be having some issues tonight. We will uh, we will plow through. Absolutely. So we'll, uh, yeah. Hi, Rachel. Nice Hi. to have you here. We'll get you to kind of give us a sound check just to see that things are working okay there. Alrighty. Hello, my name is Rachel. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Can you all hear me? It seems uh, it seems that the mic is uh, is really really low, from what I can tell. <laughs> what about you guys? We'd love to hear from the uh, chat room. Just about the sound. We're not going to bother with a lag test because we know we've got it. Looks like Justin's having another uh, another issue. Rachel, do you hmm. mind bringing... If you could bring your microphone here. We don't normally do this on the air. Well, Greg in Texas says he could hear her. Yeah. Everybody's cell phone Other than off. the... We're good. What a, what a good-looking question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting the, a very important pack, call during the show. Here we go. We're going to get Rachel all solved out. There we go. Tuck down so they can see your face. Otherwise, it looks like you're just... Mm-hmm. There you go. And the joys of live the live joys airing. Of live TV. Mm-hmm. This is the gain switch on this microphone. Rachel, what are you doing? Don't you even start. Fun times that we have. Give me a sound check. Me? Yeah. Hello. Hello. We're getting there. We're getting there. And you don't have uh, questions coming in in the chat room just yet? No, nothing. Yeah, they're just talking about the choppiness and, and well, the sound the pretty much still. TV. So Should we start you the know. show like again? <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like it never happened. Yes. Okay, Ray, that should do it. I just modded your uh, your microphone. How's that? Can you hear me now? I think we can hear you now. All righty. Oh, there we go. Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, Rachel, it's nice to have you here. Hello. Welcome to Category 5 TV. And uh, Rachel's going to be uh, talking to us about what's coming up in the news uh, tonight. I'll let you kind of give us a, a bit of information about what uh, what we can expect in about a half hour, Rachel. And uh, it's nice to have you here. All right. Sony wants you to agree not to sue them. Otherwise, they'll cut you off from the PlayStation Network. Some versions of Windows 8 will drop support for Adobe Flash. My screen has gone black, and so... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how that works? We're, we're learning the iPad wait, tonight. Wait. Okay, you got to figure. I think I got it. Buttons. All right. <laughs> Hundreds of GoDaddy-hosted websites were hacked last weekend, and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries came under cyber attack and said nothing to officials. Bacteria-fueled cells have shown... 
to provide a limitless power of supply, <laughs> supply of power. So stick around. These stories are coming up in order 30 minutes from now. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. And, uh, okay, we've got uh, tons of stuff coming up. We've got some new viewers. Uh, you do have some information there for us. Eh? I do. That right. that I do right, have. Right, my friend. So the, some of the new people who have registered on Category5.tv, uh, I guess they qualify for a bo- for bonus viewer points and, of course, all sorts of fun, exciting, awesome prizes. So we have, and you have to forgive me if I don't pronounce these right, uh, Lever Call, Tony One, Old Guy Jim, Abriano, Cole Fritz, Fritzkau, Fritzkau, or RF West, Fat Boy 106, Medusa 93, Blythe 55, Fergio 1, Greg N, Luce, Luce K Cowell, sorry, uh, Rick C, Jessica Bell, Halden, Digger Cosmo, and P. Wavery. So welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for joining up. And if you haven't already registered for Category5.tv, make sure that you do so. It's free. We won't charge you. We promise. All that's you have to do is sit here and listen to our horrible jokes and us bantering on. So that's pretty much your payment. But <laughs> other than that, it's great. Yeah. Is that how you see things? And only sometimes. Okay. No, there's it's lots, fun. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of stuff to do on our website, and we've got lots of cool uh, opportunities for you to win some stuff. And speaking of, I would love <sighs> to give you a year supply. Oh, there's the Star Trek Ooh. characters trying to get in on the batteries again. Oh, wow. We have a year supply <laughs> of eco-alkaline batteries to give you, and all you have to do is visit, visit this URL, cat5.tv slash free batteries, and you'll find out more details. Uh, Eco Alkalines are the official battery of Category 5 Technology TV, and we use them in uh, in all our devices, and it's uh, they're fantastic batteries. Mm-hmm, they're absolutely. eco-friendly, and, uh, and they are carbon neutral, the first batteries to be certified carbon neutral. Check them out and find out how you can win a year supply at cat5.tv slash free batteries. Great. Any questions for us in the chat room that, uh, that Krista can jump right into? And uh, I'm frantically pushing over your emails. I've got... Oh, a good uh, right right at the at the end there. I'm getting about 20 emails here live at mm. Category Five TV. So we're pushing those over to your desk so that you can read those off to me. Excellent. It's actually no questions yet in the chat room. I think we might be having a little bit of lag tonight. Yeah, we're gonna run into that so. I think tonight, unfortunately. So. Great. Are we gonna jump into some questions then right now? Yeah, if you got some for me. Oh, okay. Sure. I just have to prepare myself. <laughs> Let's see. So our first question is from Dennis Feingen. He says, Robbie and friends, I usually have three windows on one monitor open while watching Category 5 TV, main backstage and chat room. Ooh, you got us covered. On the other monitor, I read my mail, Outlook 2010, and surf with Chrome. While you were showing how to create a stop motion video last Tuesday, I happened to come across a new product that would fit in perfectly, the Pico, Pico Flex Dolly. It holds a camera on a miniature dolly, just like the big commercial ones, only a five and a quarter inch wide package. Here's the link. Do you have the link there? I'm going to pull that up, actually. Yeah, okay. I'd love to see it. I have one on order and plan to attach an RC car to motorize the camera dolly package. Seriously. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> RC, R- radio control. He's going to mm-hmm. operate this. By... Why would you not? Why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. That sounds like the way to do it. He says, sorry that they won't ship out of the U.S. at the moment. Oh, maybe you could just drive with your little RC car through the Canada customs and up to us here. Oh, he says, I have no interest, or this is disclaimer, I have no interest in the, the P- Pico Flex Dolly other than as a customer. Hope your viewers enjoy the video. Keep up with the great service and perform, and, ser- sorry, <laughs> the great service you perform for the PC geeks out out here. Even Windows users learn something every week. Eric is good, but Hillary and Krista are fantastic. Of course. Cheers. I mean, aw shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Sincerely, Dennis Finnegan. Finnegan? Finnegan? Finnegan, I think. Finnegan. So here's, here's the device that he's actually talking about. I think this is the coolest thing. So it's like a, literally, like a, a little cart that you can attach your camera to. That would be really handy. For That's stop, pretty cool. Like we're talking about stop motion video and the fact that we're, we were hmm. working with some stop motion video hmm. over the past couple of episodes. That would be a, a very cool device to have. I'll post the links in the show notes for episode number 209 for you, Dennis. 
And thanks for that. Excellent. Very cool stuff. Has anybody else uh, been working on their stop motion voiceovers? Do you know about this? You know, I watched I watched that part of yeah. the, of the last show. I'll admit I didn't watch the whole thing because it was on lunch. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that was pretty cool. So I'm excited to see what kind of things that the the viewers send we've got in. Some that are that have already come in, and we've got these these action figures that uh, we've created a stop motion video with, and your opportunity to create the voiceover for that stop motion video. Uh, is there and uh, you know visit our website category 5.tv I believe it was episode 207 and uh, on that episode you'll see it there on our website um, it's your chance to get some viewer points by providing sending in a, uh, a very cool voiceover ally you <laughs> cool stuff very cool I love the, uh, the, the ones that have come in so far and we're going to be sharing those on a future show as well yay yeah <laughs> All right, we have another question here from Greg. Uh, Hi, Robbie. I usually watch the show through Miro. Recently bought an Android phone. Trying to watch the show on the phone, but approximately 10, 11 minutes into the show, the video stops. An error pops up that says, cannot play this video. Sorry, this video cannot be played. I tried different video players on Android with no success. Any ideas? Um, I don't Hmm. have an Android device. I wish I did to test with for you. But it seems to me like the video is getting loaded. It's playing mm-hmm. to that point. So there's got to be something wrong with the file, maybe in the download, maybe in the, the synchronization to your Android device. What I would suggest is try our mobile website, uh, mobile.category5.tv. And on that site, it will come up on your device, and you can select the episode and press play. The other option is to go to our website, category5.tv, on a PC, and using your Android device, get a QR code scanner. Uh, you'll find it in in your app store for any device, right? A QR code. Uh, let me let me actually bring up our website and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Category five dot TV. This is our main website. Okay. And if you go to any episode, so let's go to last week's episode number two hundred eight with Eric. You'll, in fact, see that uh, partway down the page there, once it comes up there, I'm going to bring up my QR reader on my iPod Touch. I believe I have one installed here. Maybe I don't. But it's free in the App Store. QR scan. There we go. So I've got a, just a simple QR scan software. It works very much like a camera. So it, it looks like a camera there. And if you look at the website, there's a QR code right there. This guy on the website, right? So if I hold up my device to that, it beeps and it actually brings up the episode that is shown on the screen there. So that's another way that you can play Category 5 TV on your your device. So you'll see that what has come up, I guess you can't really see that. Let's see if this helps. What has come up is the episode with Eric that I just scanned off of the website. So then by pressing play, it should work reasonably well, I hope. So let us know if if that helps. Uh, But our official website is mobile.cat5 or mobile.category5.tv for your mobile device. Try it on your Android. It should work fantastically. And I hope that that helps. In the meantime, uh, (laughs) yeah, let us know. Okay. Thanks for the question. Great. Well, I guess we'll try to fire through a few more. There's a ton yeah. of questions tonight. Perfect. So, hi, Category 5 gang. This looks like it's from Alexandra. I'm about to do a dual boot with dual boot with Windows 7 and Ubuntu 12.10, waiting for the final release on my laptop. And I want to make sure I can easily access my Ubuntu home folder from Windows. Ideally, Ideally, home folder and my documents would be one combined folder. Is that possible? The only way I can think of is putting the home folder on a separate partition in TFS so Windows can read it. Um, but I know you don't recommend that because it will shorten the life of my hard drive. She said, yes, I've been paying attention. <laughs> Very good. What, do, what do you, oh, great master of Ubuntu, suggest? Oh, you're just stroking his ego now. <laughs> That's, that's dangerous. Thanks for the great show. I've been watching since a bit before Carrie joined. Keep up the great work. Live long and prosper. Hey, you've been around for a hey, Cheers. <laughs> Jeez, now you got him going. <laughs> there we go. Oh, 
Oh, you look swanky. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Got one for you, too. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> it's oversized. Oh, it doesn't stick on. That's too bad. We can use <laughs> rhinestones. Oh, bad. yeah. I'm so glad that you haven't used all those up. Was that? That was from Alexandra? Yeah. Oh, hey. It is so good to have <laughs> you joining us. Uh, it's been a while, and uh, I'm glad to see that you're, you're still joining us here in the community. Um, what I would do... In a case like that, you want to dual boot with your Windows and, and Linux system. Your thinking is to get Windows to read the Linux partition. I think that's probably a risky way to do it because, well, I mean, if you put your home folder on, a, on an NTFS file system, the problem with that is that you're going to lose the fact you're going to lose the ability to use sim links, uh, which are extremely important for your home folder. So that can be a, a pretty big problem. In addition to that, um, permissions are different on an NTFS drive versus, uh, uh, say, like your ext3. So what I would do is I would have your home folder be uh, just as it would be, an ext3, ext4 kind of file system. But then in Windows create your My Documents folder, okay? Don't put any documents in your Linux system just yet. Go into Windows, get your My Documents working and stuff like that the way that you want. Put your doc files in there on the NTFS drive. Then, back in Linux, get into your FS tab file. That's the file system table. And I'll bring up mine here and see if, uh, see if it reveals anything to us. So you go into terminal and cd slash etc slash uh, or just enter, so cd slash etc. And then if I go, uh, I'm going to use nano for the sake of it. So the file system table actually shows what hard drives you have mounted and where they're mounted to, okay? So what you can do using that, and it's going to be different per device, so I can't really give you the, the end-all, be-all solution answer, but what I'm going to say is now take your slash home slash Alexandra slash documents with a capital D and make that remember it's got to be an empty folder turn that into a mount point using FS tab now get your my documents from the NTFS drive on the Windows drive uh, get that mounted to your slash home slash Alexandra slash documents folder so now in Linux if you open the documents folder, you're in fact seeing the My Documents folder that is on Windows. Windows has a, a, a very poor ability to interact with the Linux file system, but Linux, on the other hand, can read and write to NTFS without problem. So you're, you'll be able to save files, you'll be able to edit them uh, and save them, and then when you reboot into Windows, they'll be accessible within Windows just as if they were you know, they're in your My Documents, so there's nothing to it. So. Hopefully that uh, at least points you in the right direction. Um, if it doesn't make sense, let me know. But essentially we want to mount your Windows My Documents to your Documents folder. And same, similarly with any other folders that you want to do, right? But not your home folder. Home folder needs to remain separate on a Linux file system. Cool. Thanks for the question, Alexandra. Again, nice to have you here. And uh, I appreciate the question. Well... Just flipping through. <laughs> okay, here's a question from, not really a question, from John Zimmerman. He says that this is a follow-up. Because of your help, he's getting closer, but now getting an error. See attachment. Okay. Let me see if I can track that one down. What was the email? Um, uh, from John Zimmerman. Yes. Okay. So this is, we're working with the Pogo Plug device. And John, uh, I appreciate you getting back to me and, and filling us in as to um, how far we're getting here. Let's take a look at the screenshot that John has provided. There we go. So I'm glad that you've got to the point where you're able to run the script. That's good. So that's the Pogo Plug FS script. Okay but it's saying no mount point specified. And that's because you have not specified any, basically, command line arguments. So what we need to actually do is we need to tell Pogoplug uh, FS where your Pogoplug is, uh, pardon me, what your username and password is, and where it wants to be mounted to. Let's see if I can bring up that script. Just 
I'd like to remember where I put it last week. Anybody remember? Hobo bug. Yeah, look at that. So I'm getting the error while loading shared library libfuse wrong elf class. So I'm going to try installing fuse. Because I want to get there for you, John. And if uh, if you can bear with me, just as I get this uh, going for John, I'd like to uh, see if I can. Let's see. And I'm doing this on the fly, live, and so it's it's tough. But we'll see if I can get it real quick. And if I can't, then John will will need to um, move the question. But I will um, off the air. I'll take care of you. Let's see. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to cover it for you tonight, John. Um, what I'll do, though, is I'm going to get that PokePlugFS um, conflict resolved on my system because remember last week when I tried to run it, I didn't even get there because, and I just moved on because I figured you wouldn't be uh, having that same problem. But what you can do, John, best thing for you to try, just to get to that place on your own tonight without having to wait for me to get it fixed on my end, is... In your terminal, where your Pogo Plug script is now. This time, dot slash Pogo Plug FS dash dash help. Okay, that's going to output the information for you as to what you need to specify, and what you need to be telling that script is you need to tell it what your username and password is for your Pogo Plug account and where you want it to mount to, uh, and those options are going to be shown when you do the dash dash help, so you'll know exactly what's going on. All right, Rachel, how are you doing over there? <laughs> That's how I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you can say hi to Rachel in the uh, chat room. And uh, yeah, it's good to have you here. Uh, I was reading your bio tonight, which is on our website, category5.tv. Um, one of the things that struck me as interesting is that your media experience spans some amazing uh, talents, one of which was that you were dressed in a bovine costume and uh, apparently you made it into the news. Care to expand on that? No, I was just singing in uh, the Wackadoo Zoo. And of all <laughs> the people they could have taken a photo of in their animal costumes, they got me as a cow, like, so. <laughs> there you <laughs> have it. That's all of my media experience. <laughs> we, need to, we need to do our best uh, to track down that photograph and, and make I, I know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you take care of getting that to us, and we'll put it up on your bio. Uh, Rachel's bio is, of, of course, on our website, category5.tv, uh, if you go to About Us, and, uh, and you'll see the information about the team. And uh, Rachel's on that list. Um, who is, uh, you're actually going to be joining us during season five, so it's nice to have you here tonight as a bit of a preliminary, just introducing mm -hmm. Rachel to the show and uh, yeah, so that she knows kind of how things um, are supposed to work. Supposed to, I say that <laughs> as we experience horrible lag from Justin.tv tonight, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate, but hopefully uh, you're enjoying this on the download at least. So, um, so yeah, I guess one more question, then we'll, uh, we'll jump right into the news with you, Rachel. Sure. I'm not exactly sure what this is here. Okay. It is from Voodoo Sandman. He says, Robbie, what what was the Chroma program that you used to place yourself at the helm of Enterprise? Yes, I would have okay. named a space fish Buck Rogers after the actor Gil Gerard. Also, because your co-star Krista looks a lot like Aaron Gray, who played Colonel Wilma Deering. See oh, yeah? attachments. See attachments. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is who you're meant to look like? Ah. Aaron Gray. Okay. There's you. Mm-hmm. That's closer, I think, than the one that came <laughs> in for me. What was yours? Mine was... was Mr. Um, Clean? A Teletubby. No. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ray. <laughs> no, it was uh, a bald guy. Just a random bald guy. Oh, which, I could see know, the similarities. Yeah. My kids Mr. think... Potato Head. <laughs> Thanks again, Rachel. <laughs> All the viewers are going to love having you here. Uh, on this one, uh, here we go. Me. So that's that's our, our viewer. Mm -hmm. This is uh, 
Uh, Voodoo Sandman. Voodoo Sandman. Mm-hmm. There it goes. Uh, that's that's going to be worthy of 100 points right there. Eric Kidd on the on the big screen, along with Aaron Gray and Crystal Wells. Why is your head so much bigger than everyone else's? I don't know. Maybe I've been talking about your ego, but maybe mine's well, just, you know, just a of lot larger. Like that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Well, like, it happens. <laughs> My daughter did something funny, and I think she's she's a bit saucy. I don't know, but you didn't you weren't saucy when you were a kid. No, I no. wasn't. I no. was a good child. Rachel, you you were never ever saucy, were you? No. Never. <laughs> we're sitting at, at a fast food restaurant. I just decided to take them out just just for the convenience and, and fun of it. Mm-hmm. And I was still hungry, <laughs> as is sometimes the case with dad. Mm-hmm. And and. So I, I just kind of reached over and grabbed oh. one of her french fries. Oh, no, you didn't. I did, and I'm sitting there eating her french fry. This is my six-year-old daughter, okay? <laughs> Talking about sauce. She says, Dad. I said, I'm just helping you. And you know what she says? <laughs> she says, if you want to help me, pick it up and put it in my mouth. <laughs> This is Bravo! My six-year-old daughter. I like and her. We're sitting there and it's like she came up with this, and I'm like, "That's good enough for stand-up, I think, my dear." That's good. Unbelievable. That is funny. Just unreal. <laughs> good for you, my dear. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to let you take it away with the news there, uh, Rachel, and then uh, we've got some Twitter uh, questions that are some Twitter comments that we'd like to uh, to share with you from at Robbie Ferguson and at Category Five TV. So uh, let's take it away with the news. Alrighty. Sony is preparing to ban gamers from the PlayStation Network unless they waive the right to collectively sue it over future security breaches. The firm has amended PSN's terms and conditions and users have to agree to them next time they log in. The move comes months after a string of hacking attacks compromised over 100 million accounts of the PlayStation Network subscribers. It is, however, possible to opt out of the agreement within the next 30 days. Gamers will now have to try to resolve any legal issues with an arbitrator picked up by Sony before being able to file a lawsuit. And one of the web's most widely used technologies is going to be absent from some versions of Windows 8. Microsoft is to drop support for Adobe Flash from the web browser that works with the Metro interface on Windows 8. The Metro user interface is most likely to be used on tablets as it displays applications and programs as easy-to-touch colored tiles. Flash will still be supported in the Windows 8 desktop interface and the desktop version of Internet Explorer. Hundreds of GoDaddy sites were compromised to point towards a site hosting malware last weekend. The mass hack of around 445 sites involved the injection of hostile code into the HT access files of the sites. GoDaddy quickly removed the hostile code before working with its customers to take back full control of the sites, which were reportedly compromised by a password hack. GoDaddy's Chief Information Security Officer, Todd Redfoot, told the main name wire the accounts were accessed during the account's holder's username and password. It's unclear how the passwords needed to pull off the attack were obtained, but some sort of targeted phishing attack is one likely explanation. GoDaddy's investigation into the attack continues. Japan's top weapons makers has confirmed it was the victim of a cyber attack reportedly targeting data on missiles, submarines, and nuclear power plants. Mitsubishi Heavy Metals Industries said viruses were found on more than 80 of its servers and computers last month. The government said it was not aware of any leak of sensitive information, but the Defense Ministry has demanded MHI carry out a full investigation. Officials were angered after learning of the breach from local media reports. U.S. researchers say they have demonstrated how cells fueled by bacteria can be self-powered and produce a limitless supply of hydrogen. Until now, they explained an internal source of electricity was required in order to power the process. However, the team added the current cost of operating the new technology is too high to be used commercially. Details of the findings have been published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And to get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom, uh, the Category 5 TV newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributors by our community of viewers viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Rachel Shu. Rachel, thank you so much. Um, and, uh, of course, the news tonight is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug, 
at cat5.tv slash pogoplug. And by Planet Calypso, check out the free online game. You can download it at cat5.tv slash Calypso. Cool. Uh, I would like to uh, take a look at Twitter tonight. People who are good enough to uh, message us on Twitter, make sure you do follow us over there as well. Uh, Twitter.com slash Robbie Ferguson. Twitter.com slash Category 5 TV. Cool. Where are you? I was waiting for that. I was trying to be quiet. (laughs) I don't have Twitter. (laughs) She's not a member of the Twitter. Mm -hmm. Rachel, are you on the Twitter? No, I'm not a twit. Hey, now. Hey, now. (laughs) Okay, so we've got one here from Schlawin from Ontario who says, uh, Enterprise was my favorite of the Star Treks except for the season with the Expanse. I liked Enterprise. Did you watch Enterprise? We just finished it the other night, my wife and I. I didn't. <laughs> and we're very, very sad by the end. Like, just the way that they kind of ripped off the viewers and, and the fans and countless fans of the show. Um, but it's funny that, uh, you know, except for the part with The Expanse, which is like uh, uh, like a third of the entire series. But very, very enjoyable show, of course. David Maydew, uh, Dave underscore Maydu on Twitter. Uh, from West Midlands, Dudley says, I'll be watching Cat 5 TV tonight. There's our hashtag. But first, I have a night at the local amateur radio club having uh, a Linux night tonight. Very cool that he's uh, having what he calls a Linux night. Lots of fun. Mm-hmm. Lots of fun. And uh, Dave is a is a is uh, an active follower of the show on, uh, on Twitter as well as uh, here at Category5.tv. We appreciate him. I've got one from... Uhop, at Uhop on Twitter, who says there's new terms for colon slash slash and URLs. They are walrus teeth or double meh. <laughs> I like the the walrus teeth. I like that too. Reference that that kind of works for me. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, uh, one or two more. This one comes to us from Cork to Canada, who says I'm finding it difficult to source a French tutor for my daughter. It's because she's starting from scratch. So has recently moved to uh, to Barry, I guess. This is from uh, Moya Walsh, uh, who, as you see from her profile, is from Barry, Ontario. Uh, it's nice to have you here uh, at Category 5 watching the show, a local viewer. And I, I think if you're looking for a French tutor and, and you're, you're, it's because she's starting from scratch, hmm. I think that you don't, you wouldn't know the difference. So... <laughs> <laughs> How would you know if they're good or not? Mm-hmm. That's the dangerous thing if you don't know French, right? Uh, Popey on Twitter, at Popey, says, Side benefit of having children, there are always sweets in the house. And today, it's flying saucers that Daddy is stealing. And to celebrate Popey's tweet, I have a, uh, a box of candies. these kind of gummy things. How long have they been here they, for? They are kind of Mummified candy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> So, Popey. <laughs> there you go. Aw, oh, thanks. For you. I'm going to put this with my pile because I'm scared yeah. I'm going to eat it. And then, it, well, I'll just like be chewing for, Popey, what do we have, 20 friend. minutes. Halloween is coming up. And, and it's exactly that where the kids get so much candy. And you don't like to eat your kids' candy, Popey. I know. I know that guilt that you feel inside. <laughs> but at the same time, they get so much stuff. It's ridiculous. Well, you could always pull the trick, like, oh, we have to look through it to make sure it's safe. And oh, then, this oh, this full size chocolate bar is not safe. And, you know, just pocket right. it. But right? my kid, you know how saucy my kid is. She'd be on to that. Oh, well, you can try with the younger one then. <laughs> so, brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. Flying saucers and all. Hmm. Hmm. Speaking of Halloween, mm-hmm. cat5.tv slash costumes is where you can get your. Uh, ultimate costume be the best dressed at the party cat5.tv slash costumes well, there's some pretty neat costumes up there I hear you're mm-hmm. being a kitty cat this year hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think you heard wrong <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where, what are your sources I, just, I don't know internet are you letting on what, what you're going to be no I no. It crinkles? it's crinkly that's all we know Yeah. I'm expecting like some kind of 80's disco rocker no. Okay. No. 
You can keep send guessing that. Guesses. <laughs> send in your guesses live at category5.tv. What do you think Krista is going to be? Besides awesome. That because that's given, saying. right? Yeah. I don't know what you say about me. me. Like, when I'm not here, you say, Krista is not awesome. And then, (laughs) you know. Ah, dear me. (laughs) Do we have one more question at all? I'm sure we do. I I thought there were lots of questions, but try to squeeze in as many as we can in the hour. This one's a uber long question. I hope that's okay. Okay. So it's from Peter Lewis. He says, Dear Robbie and the gang, I wrote to you last week about setting up Ubuntu. I used an old PC to install Ubuntu on. I installed ooh, um, M- Math Ubuntu. Oh, Myth Ubuntu. Yeah, that's okay. it. Um, but found that when I tried to use the networking cable, it would not recognize it. So I could not use the intern... The I assume that's supposed to be internet on that machine. I then uninstalled Mythbuntu and reinstalled the version of Ubuntu to see if the problem was with the Mythbuntu installation disk. Mm. The same thing happened again. The Ubuntu worked, but it could not access the internet. Then I realized that the networking card is on the motherboard and requires an installation CD for the drivers for Ubuntu. This is a chicken and egg situation, and you need the drivers to get the networking card working. That was always a, a problem with like Windows 2000, Windows 98. It was a hor- Windows XP even. Hmm. It was horrible. But you don't see that so much with Linux. Windows. I, I can't think of a <laughs> Linux network card that doesn't work out of the box. So I would I would be wary of whether or not that card is even uh, is functional. I check the cable that you're using. Um, I don't know that. I don't, especially this is an older system. Like oh goodness! An old PC to install Ubuntu mm-hmm. on, so it's not like it's some card that is like superb, you know, the the top of the line integrated uh, networking card. So there's something up with that. Can you get a PCI networking card for like ten bucks or something and pop that in and see if it detects it? Because if that's the case, I would just go that route. Um, but uh, like you say, like you could you could go to all the effort of moving that computer onto an internet connection, getting it, because if it's not readily available, if you don't have internet, you don't have internet. That's 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 all there is to it, right? I presume you can get internet, but like I say, if 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 that's the problem that you're encountering, a, a network card that's not detecting in Linux, I think really um, you're going to uh, you're going to want to put a new network card in there because there's something up with that. Oh. Sure. Seems seems like that would be the way. Sorry. Otherwise, yeah, get get an internet connection to see, but I just can't see it being the case. There's got to be something wrong with that card. There's just got to be. Or the cable. Check the cable. Cool. Cool. So, as we were saying earlier in the show, YouTube is actually allowing its users now to edit their videos with a rudimentary mm-hmm. editor, mind you. But they're still actually, such a good idea, though. It's a great idea, and and others mm-hmm. have attempted it. But what I think is that YouTube, being as big as they are, and of course they're owned by Google, it it's an opportunity for that kind of technology to really um, hit the masses. Because now all of a sudden, if you can go to your YouTube channel and see all your videos that are there, and you can actually now go edit video. Here's a video here. So if I click on edit video on my video that has been uploaded to YouTube, now remember this is my video, I'm actually able to see side by side the two video previews. There's a neat little button up here called I'm feeling lucky, which of course Google has every right to use that term because they coined it. If you click on that, what it does is it basically equalizes the video, fixes up the the brightness and colors, Mm -hmm. the contrast and things like that. So you see that this is the original video. It's a look at the curtain, especially compared to here, where the saturation is just—it's really well saturated. Wow, and, and actually looks, does a pretty good job. It does a pretty good job for for something so quick. And we also have to keep in mind that what we're looking at there is is a preview only. Mm-hmm. So when you it's save your job. video, yeah, it's it's pixelated and it's it's not the best quality, but it shows you kind of what the effect is going to show like. But when you render the video, when you save the video, it's going to re-render the video in full quality. So you're going to get the absolute best quality that you can get. You can simply point to any of the uh, any of the options in order to see what they do. If I turn off, I'm feeling lucky. 
then I can go through and actually manipulate each individual thing, like the fill light. So I can kind of fix up the lighting of my video itself. This video lighting, of course, here in the studio is pretty good, so it's, it's not needing it. But your video may have, you know, poor lighting, or if there's backlight, then it's going to have um, poor lighting at the foreground and lots of colors in the background. So you can actually play with these with simple sliders. It's really, really simple, and it works really quite well for what it is. Taking it one step further, we've got options like the trim, which allows you to say, okay, well, I want to clip off the front and the end of the video because maybe I was setting up the camera, and so there's a couple seconds there, and I haven't been able to edit it out. So you can actually do that, and it's trimmed out just like that. That quickly, it's done. So I've now trimmed the video. I can add special effects, and again, it is very simplistic, but effective. There are things like mosaic pixelization, neon pink, neon green, but then there's some useful ones like sepia. See sepia? Yes. How do you say just it? Just checking. You know, like we usually say sepia. Sepia. That's just. But I mean, that might be as uh, graphic designers butchering yes. the language. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is old fashioned. It's kind of created a, a bit of an old camera hue to it. With that, you can see that there's actually a vignette around the uh, the edge of the video. That kind of subtle gradient darkness. That and what that is is it's emulating the old camera lens, where you can actually see the roundness of the camera lens. Mm -hmm. So, really quite cool. So, I'd encourage you to check it out if you have a YouTube account. Um, if you don't have a YouTube account, uh, sign up for one, and then that way you can subscribe to the Category Five YouTube channel, which is Category Five TV. Or you can get there with a hot link. It's cat5.tv slash YouTube. Other things that you can do with this is add audio tracks. Um, you can rotate your video. So if you've taken the video on a device like this and you want to actually change it to landscape, you can do that easily uh, with the simple rotation. And again, it's very, very fast. So if I rotate this video on the fly, you can see it, it does it just like that real quick. It has video stabilization features, which what that does is if you have shot that video and your hand, you're using your hand to, to hold the camera, and you're a little bit shaky, you, especially if you zoom in, and there's nothing you can do about that. So what stabilization does, it zooms in just a little bit, and then it moves around the video, and so it detects, okay, well, here's a tree. So if, if it's going like this, let's stabilize it. We zoom in a little bit, and then hold the tree in that position. So now it gives the effect of the video camera having been held very uh, still. Um, so with that stabilized feature, you'll be able to remove some of that jitter from uh, holding the video camera, which is great for family movies. It's a fantastic tool if uh, if you're into uh, you know if you want to share your YouTube videos with family and friends, if you want to share your home movies with uh, with family and friends on YouTube, or if you're simply uh, wanting to get onto YouTube and and create videos, uh, it's a very simplistic way to uh, to add some cool effects and even improve the quality of your video by fixing lighting and other issues that uh, that could be uh, a part of your your original video dub that uh, you know without with doing it this way you don't even need any software to do it so what I'd like to see what what I would love to see YouTube introduce is the ability to now actually not just trim the front and the tail of the video but also give you the ability to cut out little segments in between mm -hmm. you know like when I'm sitting here doing a review and then the kids run down here and scream and and, and then, then you see Robbie's upstairs. angry face. He just oh, wants yeah, to cut that yeah. out. <laughs> and then they run upstairs. And it's like, oh, if I could just cut that out, it would be perfect. Mm, but alas. So that's that's what uh, that's what we would like to see, I think. But cool stuff. YouTube.com. And, of course, cat5.tv slash YouTube if you'd like to uh, follow us there. Cool. Mm, cool. I don't Any know if you're questions. I was gonna say there's a there's a request here in the yeah, chat room okay. if you're up for it. Hey, Smitty, Smitty, Smitty Smith wants to know if uh, you would like to say happy birthday to Jan in Westland, Michigan, since she has to put up with Smitty Smith watching us every <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> All right, get her in the room, Smitty Smith, because <laughs> I know that she's probably sitting on the couch and she's. She's like, probably like, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, no, it's my birthday, and you're watching room, Category you're watching Five. Category Five, and she's in the other room. Hmm. You know, probably all sad because you're, you're you're choosing the show. I hope you made her a cake. <laughs> you had better have made her a cake, sir. And if not, you were in some serious trouble. And, Absolutely. Uh, and Jan, I give you permission to just kind of like 
bop him on the side of the head. But, <laughs> um, happy birthday, and uh, thanks for letting Smitty sing Smith. It, Rob. Yeah. Oh, we sing we need to birthday. sing happy birthday. She says uh, <laughs> we can't do that because happy birthday, is, if you can imagine, is actually a, a registered non royalty free. Really? Song. Yeah. So if we oh. sing it, we would have to pay through the teeth to. So Jan, mm-hmm. just know that we are thinking of you on this <laughs> your birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. There, we created a song for you. That's our own. Our own. Copyright 2011. <laughs> Distributed under Creative Commons Attribution. So if anybody wants to use it again. <laughs> cool. Cheers. Thanks for mm-hmm. watching tonight. Thanks for letting them watch on your birthday. I'm not giving them too much trouble. <laughs> Well, let's see. There might be another question. Oh, yep. I do have another question. It is from Jonathan. It says, hello, Cat5.tv crew. Hello. Hello. This is Jonathan Acosta from Costa Rica. Hello. I've been a viewer for some months now, and I'm very fond of the show. I just watched, he says, pretty late. Yes, episode 207. It's not that late. Uh, I noticed that at the end of the show, Hillary read a viewer question about OpenShot not working properly with Blender. I'm not sure about this, but I thought it would help to share another point of view as an experimental Blender user. I think that maybe the problem is that Blender is actually under heavy development and has constant changes in its international workings. The Blender scripting engine is powered by Python, and its API might have undergone some recent changes that make Blender incompatible with OpenShot. And so the OpenShot team might be a little behind the API changes. Anyways, I hope this is of help. I wish you guys the best, and as always, I'll be expecting your new episodes mm-hmm. cool well, that makes me uh, makes me think that while I I kind I I think I sort of disagree in that I think openshot does a fantastic job of keeping on top of the new versions of blender but it makes me wonder did mm-hmm. that viewer who was having that trouble did they in fact install openshot as was instructed through their repository so that they got the newest version mm-hmm. that would be my only concern because if you installed it through Ubuntu through that repository you'd be getting an old version. But I co- we covered that when we were talking about it. So make sure um, that that's what you've done is gone to uh, gone through the steps to add the repository so that you get the new version. Uh, but they've got version 1.4 out now, or 1.7, I believe, out now. Is it 1.4 or 1.7? Krista, help me. I don't know. OpenShotVideo.com. 1.4. I was right the first time. Uh, version 1.4 is out, so you can get that get that installed. Make sure it's maybe that's all it was. Is maybe you've got a wrong version of OpenShot because I think they make it so that it does work very well with Blender. I hear you. I hear you. Thanks very for the cool. comment. Let's see, I don't see any more questions floating around here. No more in the chat room. Uh, no any more. Any more email? Well, there was one. Let's see if I can find it. It wasn't really a question. It was more so, I don't remember who sent it. Just commenting that they're very happy to see Eric was here last week. Everyone yeah. missed him. Yeah, it was certainly nice to have Eric uh, join us. He's been away for quite some time. Um, just with, he's, he had been working on Tuesday nights. So, uh, yeah, it was good to, to get him into the studio. Still looking, eh? I can't find it. Oh, no. <laughs> I did read it. I swear okay. I did. So there it is. Uh, a viewer at random stated that it was... Well, I'm sure it's it's more more common than just one viewer. I'm sure lots of people like Eric. <laughs> Actually, I got a lot of uh, <laughs> nice comments um, when Eric was here and, and uh, following his being here. Lots of people had said that... Because he uh, brings he happiness to the show. Yeah, he's a lot And of scruffiness. Happiness and scruffiness. Mm-hmm. There you have Who it. Who doesn't like that? Yeah. Can you believe that we are coming up on season five? No, I cannot believe that. Just a couple of weeks away. Next week is our fourth anniversary. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I mean, Rachel is just like, but it seems like just today that I just got here. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, yeah, one week away from our fourth anniversary. And then uh, the following week, we're going to, uh, we're going to be launching season five of category five very excited about that very cool yeah we've got lots of treats in store for you uh many that i'm not uh i'm not allowed to say 
but I know that you're going to be excited for them. They're going to be excited for them, eh? I, sure. I actually don't know what they are either. You don't know what they are? Not, no. We well, kind of, I know some of them. We kind of spoiled one tonight. Hey, Rachel, how are you? Nice to see you. Mm-hmm. Right. Good to have you here. Uh, but there are more, <laughs> there are more uh, surprises as well uh, for season five. For... From from the ones that I do know, I don't know if there's more. Maybe there's not. Okay. Um, they are pretty fantastic. You heard it. You here, should be so. sitting down when you start up the Category 5.TV in Season Definitely 5. You should be sitting, sitting down. down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next week, being that it's our fourth anniversary, we have a very special guest uh, who you know as Christy Burton, uh, who is now Christy Van Noort, uh, is going to be joining us. Uh, she's going to be co-hosting the show as a special um, kind of celebration for our fourth anniversary so i'm looking forward to having her here um so make sure you've got your weather ready and uh <laughs> i think it's gonna be a lot of fun it's gonna be nice to have christy back uh, it's been a long time so that'll be great especially since she wasn't able to make the yes the show last John time had an accident he mm-hmm. hurt his finger very s- substantially and and so they ended up having to miss the anniversary or the uh, 200th episode mm-hmm. um but she will be here for Episode number 210 next week. Be very very cool. cool. Any other questions for us in the chat room? We'd, uh, oh, oh the weather's a... already coming in. Fa- fabulous. Thanks, guys. I'll uh, bank that for next week. <laughs> Anything else for us? Let, uh, mm, let I, don't see, I don't see any questions. My stomach is growling, though. I hope you all can't hear that. <laughs> Good thing we switched away from the hotel, right? <laughs> Getting a lot of low rumbling feedback on the mic. <laughs> hmm. No questions. I'm looking for... Oh, here's one from... Uh, well, a comment from Swiss Andy that, uh, that just came in. Oh, let's see if I can get this out. So Sandy was uh, interested in React OS. Uh, Eric and I talked about it last week. React OS being a clone of Microsoft Windows, oh. so much so that it actually runs or is intended to run Windows software. So Sandy says, "I gave it a try after episode number two hundred eight, testing both the React OS Live CD as well as the pre-configured React OS VirtualBox version. Indeed, they both reminded me strongly of the real Windows." since both versions ended up in a blue screen of death during Buddha. <laughs> it's never good. Never good. Never. That's all they needed to do. They, you know, here's our Windows clone, and that's all it has to do. <laughs> it does actually do oh. more than that, Swiss Andy. But remember, uh, as Swiss Andy continues on to say, I realize that it's alphaware. So far, they're pretty close to a Windows setup with that blue screen. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they are, <coughs> pardon me, they've been alpha software for a very long time. And that's what I think makes it exciting that they're possibly going to see uh, a large, substantial financial boost um, because that could be what they need in order to create this operating system. And it's, a, it's always been an interesting project, React OS. Um, look it up. It's, it's pretty cool. R-E-A-C-T-O-S. Thanks for the comment, <laughs> Swiss Andy. Anything else in the chat room there? You, Al, says, I enjoyed the shows where you created a web page. Do you have an idea of what it will look like before you start creating the web page? Oh, that would be a question for you. I, I guess so. Yeah, when we when we actually started it, I did. I had, um, and when, when I do work with uh, programmers or developers, usually I end up laying it out so I, I don't really touch the coding or anything i just kind of make it pretty and then i send it over and i say this is what should look like make it happen she usually says make it work and i want the menu to do really fancy things like like how i know you've described this before what does the what kind of things can the menu do well what what have you done yeah well like having well he he, like a, a box so dramatic a box that's a certain specified height with a little arrow on a mouse over and the text but it's having way to be cool. Which is cool enough and, and you know, on uh, on CSS three or on 
on an HTML comp uh, uh, or a CSS and XML compliant browser, that's perfectly good. But then you get into cross browser compatibility, and it's like, uh, this is why they use images <laughs> for menus, and we don't do that. We use text for menus, and, and then and make them look like images. And then Robbie makes me feel bad. No, I don't. I've and he says things like, looks. "You know what happened? Your navigation was so complicated that it took me <laughs> hours. But don't worry, don't worry, I got it to work." Yes. But don't no. worry. He makes me yeah. feel really bad. And he says, terrible. but I got it to work. Guilt trip. Yeah. It's just terrible. Yeah. But, yeah. And then the, the problem with designing beforehand, like, um, instead of getting a, a developer to do it all, is that then I have the idea in mind. And then they right. send it over and say, here it is. And I say, can you put three more pixels in between the navigation items? I would never do like, that. Like, silly, stupid things like that. And then Robbie Let's kindly the sends back things. emails and says, Sure. <laughs> I'm sure he's grimacing the whole time, but... It's after I've sliced it that she usually requests things like but that. But yeah, so to answer the question, yeah, usually we design it before, idea. yeah. And you have a really good idea as to concepts. I think when mm -hmm. I design a website, um, one of the first things I, I figure out with the client or on my own is going through and figuring out what is the navigation going to look like, what structure is going to go into this website so that when we b build mm -hmm. the design... It is basically around that navigation structure. So we know that we've got, you know, in a very simplistic sense, we've got home, about us, contact us, uh, products, you know, things like that. So when you know that that's what you need, you know kind of how, you know, if it's going to be a horizontal menu, are there going to be drop downs? Mm -hmm. In that case, probably not. So you kind of have an idea. And then we set the width based on standards. So the website looks good on every browser. And then uh, build up from there, I think. Thanks for the question. Any other questions in the chat room? Hey, Ajat. Hey, Greg in Texas. So you, Greg in Texas mm -hmm. has uh, a, a wife who is, is <laughs> sounds like she's, she's incredibly jealous because Greg in Texas has Ubuntu installed on his computer and she's got Win 7 on hers. But to, to, to boot, Greg in Texas, his daughter, also has Ubuntu installed. Mm. So I think when you see Ubuntu... You want it, you apparently. Want Ubuntu. Yes. Well, then there's a, a quick and easy birthday present there, or anniversary yeah. present, or, Absolutely. you know, you can just install it for her, and that's it. Done. Yep. I think it's Get a good idea. Off there. You can do that for. Cool. No more questions in the chat room? We're just about out of time, but I figure I'll give you a chance to say hey or whatever. Um, do send in your viewer testimonials this week. One of the things that I really want to receive from you, and I've mentioned it a couple times, but just go to our website, category5.tv, scroll down to the very bottom of the website, and you'll see our postal box address. Grab a postcard from your local convenience store that represents your city or your country, and uh, just write some kind of note on the back and send it off to our postal box. Mm -hmm. We'd love to receive that. We love snail mail. Yeah. For all we know, there's hundreds of them on their way. And maybe they're but just... snail mail. I mean, I haven't used it in so long. You does don't know it, how long it, it take actually takes. to get here? <laughs> I don't really know. Does it ever get here? Oh, touche. Hmm. Postal system. <laughs> Just as a, as a maybe a closing note here, I just noticed a little bit of talk in the chat room. It seems you promised Rachel M and M's. Well, and I don't see any M and M's. Things kind of changed. Rachel, what are you doing? Where's the bowl of M and M's? I was promised. I I looked for M and M's, and instead, what I did is I I decided on you these guys. Threw you threw a chocolate. I, I was aiming for your forehead, and unfortunately, and you missed. I missed. But my what wife told me, Becca told me that. Dark chocolate actually gives you energy, and so I thought, well, hey, there you go. We'll all be, mm -hmm. like, energized for the show, and then, you know, it was such a mad rush, I didn't even get to eat mine. He did pass one over, and I, I, I don't remember what point, around. but I decided against eating it in case I had, like, chocolate in my teeth or something for the rest of the show, <laughs> and then that would be really embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry about that, Ray. Maybe next time, all right? <laughs> a bowl of M&Ms. A bowl of M&Ms. Sounds like a plan. Thanks yeah, for being so. here, Rachel. It's nice to see you. No problemo. No problemo. <laughs> and uh, nice to have you here. Nice to have you here, Krista. Well, it's good to be back every once in yeah. a while. Yeah, every once in a while. 
<laughs> when we'll have you back. <laughs> Next week, again, is our fourth anniversary. Chris, uh, Christy is going to be here, mm-hmm. and I'm um, looking forward to that. And then we're going to be uh, jumping right into Season 5 in two weeks. So hope you can join us. We will see you uh, next week, Tuesday night, same time, 7 o'clock. Have a great week. See you guys. See ya.